Welcome to the Picking Nerds, and today we're here to stop you from making some mistakes. It's part three of cards commander players are using wrong. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, Beezy, and that makes us the Dip Picking Nerds. We're bringing you daily commander content every single day. You can trust on us to make a video. And here's today's. It's this. Check us out on Patreon because that's the best way to support the channel. If you go there and pick your favorite perk, you'll be supporting us and spending money. Yes, and you can also go to tcgplayer.com. There's an affiliate link in the description below. Go there, click on that affiliate link, and now, as long as you buy things after clicking on that link, you're going to be supporting the Picking Nerds. You can do the same thing with Dragon Shield. They are the best sleeves in the multiverse. Go buy the sleeves off the EU or the US link. You get the best sleeves and you support the nerds as long as you use those links. Unofficial slogan of Dragon Shield. Yeah, the unofficial slogan of Dragon Shield is best sleeves in the multiverse. The actual slogan is toughest scales. Yeah. Could use some work. You know, I'm not, I'm not here to sponsor. I'm not sponsored by their slogan. Let's make it best sleeves in the multiverse. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. This, what, what do we got here? This is part three of the series. What we're doing is we're going to EDA Trek. We're looking at commanders and we're finding ones that have cards that probably have an interaction mistake. Now, there obviously may be some discrepancy here. There's, they might not be playing it 100% for this interaction, but we're going to evaluate and look at it and explain why this interaction doesn't work. And the numbers mostly support this, that this, they're too high. Like you don't just throw these cards randomly in the decks no. usually. So what happens is people think this interaction work when it doesn't, we're gonna explain that. These are rules interactions that do not work. These are cards that go uh, actively completely against what their commander says. So in relation to their commander, we're saying basically you shouldn't be playing these cards because they don't work the way that a lot of people commonly mistake them for. Yes, this first one is actually a mistake that me and BZ made mm -hmm. twice now, three times. I it don't was know. so confusing. This one is brutal. This one is very brutal. It is Homeward Path, which is a land that taps for mana or can tap to return creatures to their owner's control, and Gisa, Glorious Resurrector, which reads, two black black for a 4-4. Four, four. If a creature in opponent controls would die, exile it instead. At the beginning of your upkeep, put all creatures exiled with Gisa, Glorious Resurrector, onto the battlefield. Under your control, they gain Decayed. For those who don't know, Decayed says, this creature can't block, and you sacrifice it at the end of combat. Now, the way this looks like it would work is you could give them back, you could homeward path these guys after the Decayed trigger is on the stack and they would still get sacrificed under their owner's control, thus going back to exile to get back with Gisa. Unfortunately, not how it works. The trigger is attached to you. It is your trigger, meaning it, it prompts you, you specifically, to sacrifice that creature, meaning that if the creature leaves your control, you can no longer sacrifice it, and the other player has no trigger to make them sacrifice it. Yes, yeah, so the specific rule that kind of ruins this interaction is 701.17a. It's the only only the person who controls a creature can sacrifice it. So you control this uh, ability that prompts you to sacrifice, but you don't control the creatures, so you can't sacrifice them. So this whole little geese of homeward path thing doesn't work. The one chance homeward path had to be good is now ruined because this does not work and there is no reason now to include homeward path in Gisa. Like this is a mistake. Actually, no, it's not even just that. It's not that there's just no reason to include this in Gisa. This is actively a Nambo now in Gisa. Yeah. Gisa is taking control of your opponent's creatures and putting them under your control. You do not want to be giving them back. You don't want a land that's potentially going to be giving it back. You're just way too much in on the fact that you're going to be controlling opponent's creatures. That is Gisa. That's what she does. So Homer Path, total Nambo. You don't, in 13% of decks, it shouldn't even be, it should be in 0%. Yep. It's actually a terrible card for Gisa decks. This next entry is another one that me and Joe were personally confused by. It's Tetsuo Umazawa Fugitive, which gives your creatures a power, toughness, one, unblockability in Anawan, the Ruin Thief deck. It's in 9% of Anawan decks. And what Anawan does is he pumps all your rogues. So there's never going to be a creature that's a rogue with power or toughness, one, because they're all getting boosted. Yes. And yes, Tetsu Umazawa is a rogue. Yeah. And... It, so it gets pumped by Anawan, and on top of that, yeah, it could be like an alternate strategy. And if you're thinking alternate strategy, okay. But the fact is, if it, it just doesn't work when your commander's out, none of your rogues can ever have power or toughness unless there's... I mean, there are situations. None of your rogues were very, 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 very rarely ever have power or toughness, one or less, while Anawan is on the battlefield. And because of that... This is just a Nambo that it just should not be a 9% of decks. It, both of them work individually, but the fact is 
you want to have your commander out in the battlefield, and you don't want to be going, okay, I don't want to put my commander because then Tetsu doesn't work, and I don't want to play Tetsu because he doesn't work at all if I have my commander. I, you just It's just too much too much conflict in the deck. Anawan wants cheap rogues that are unblockable because he can get your cards back when they hit. Tetsuo Umazawa with cheap rogues doesn't do anything. It pushes through three damage. So we don't care if we have Tetsuo and not our commander because we're not doing anything productive. Dealing four damage is not anything. We need Anawan out so we can draw the cards back. Yeah, and I'll say it right now. This is the easiest This is the easiest mistake to make. I mean, we literally had an Anawan deck come in and we had a tune-up for it. We did the whole tune-up but we put Tetsuo in. And it's just such an easy mistake to make. It's a rogue. We it, messed up. It's a rogue. There's tons of creatures with one power, one toughness. It looks like it fits perfectly. But it just doesn't, and it is a nombo for the deck. All right, let's get to the next one. These are now things we have not done in person, but that are still <laughs> mistakes. It's Compost in Daryl, Hunter of Walkers. Compost is in 48% of Daryl decks. and There's not a ton of Daryl decks, but this number is like skewed so heavily because what people think happens is when you kill the zombie tokens you give away with Daryl, you draw cards, but you do not do that because Compost says whenever a black card it's put into opponent's graveyard from anywhere. You draw a card, and tokens are not cards. Tokens are not cards. This is a very strange rule interaction that people might not know. A token is its just a representation of something on the battlefield. A card is the physical. It, it physically is a card. Yeah. It, is in your, it goes in your hand. It is in your deck. Those are cards. Tokens are not. They are literally just, they rep, They can be used, they, they, you can use a card to represent them, sure, but that doesn't make them a card. You can also use a piece of paper to represent it. Or, you know, why don't you just use, you could use this remote to represent a token. You can use anything, meaning it's not a card. Yes. Uh, a lot of the, uh, what, what, where the confusion probably comes from is a lot of these old cards are like, they have different wording for dies, they have different wording for cards, tokens, leaves, all this stuff, but this one... The oracle text is just the same, and you, you do not get cards when the zombies go. Meeting compost is just completely average and should be in, you know, maybe 47% less Daryl decks. We're just not going to work. It's just, I mean, it should be, I would just say it doesn't belong in Daryl decks, period. Unless it, you have, like, a weird meta call, but it has nothing to do, if you're playing compost, it has nothing to do with Daryl. You can say that. Yeah, I mean, you've just, you're in green red. You're going to be able to, you, one, your, your commander already has draw, plenty mm -hmm. of draw. Mm -hmm. And then on top of your commander having draw, you're in green, which has tons and tons of card draw. So you, it just fine. feels so unnecessary to ever have to go to compost in a Daryl deck. The next one is super interesting to me. And I was really glad when we found this one because this one's like, wow, no, don't do this. It's Days Undoing in Nekusar. The Mind Razor decks. Now, Days Undoing is a wheel effect. We know what wheels do. But this one has a special thing. If you cast it during your turn, you end the turn as the final thing to do as this card resolves. Now, if you know Nekuzar, he has triggers. When opponents draw cards, they lose life. Does not work with Days Undoing. Because if any ability triggers while players are shuffling cards into their library or drawing seven cards, those abilities cease to exist. When the turn ends, they won't be put onto the stack. So that means it just ends the turn. Those, all those, there's, so if you have three opponents, they were all going to draw. It's going to be 21 triggers. They just don't happen. They just aren't put onto the stack. And because of that, you just don't need Days Undoing. Guess what? There's like 30 wheels of magic. We don't need Days Undoing. But it's in 14% of Nekusar decks. That's, whew, that's, it's a lot. Um, Yikes. And what we can do is obviously play all the rest of the wheels, but this is the same thing if you're in like a Zyrus, the writhing, uh, something deck where you're like I want to make I want to make a bunch of snakes I want to get this going so you're just not going to make the snakes with um, psychosis crawler you're not going to get any of the triggers for when you draw cards nothing happens the turn is just over this whole spell has to resolve before anything else goes and now anything else can't go because the turn's over yeah and you we, you I understand you want lots of wheel effects in Necrozar Necrozar like, even if you have one that wouldn't necessarily be super effective, ending your turn is just not going to be what you want on your thing. You just want Nekuzar to be triggering. You have tons of other things that should be triggering as well, yeah. such as, uh, what is it called? Like Underworld Dreams. Underworld Dreams, or there's also uh, Megrims. Those also are not going to trigger. It's the same exact situation yep. where these triggers are just going to be exiled. They're gone forever, and they will not happen. So Days of Doing just a Nambo, a Nekuzar, and... Uh, Zyrus the Writhing Storm decks. Yep, it's a wheel that won't pay you off for anything. All right, let's move to number five. This is kind of like as much of a nombo as we could get. So this we're going to we're going to put this one on here. It's Kaya's Ghost Form and Soren Vengeful Bloodlord in Kunaros Hound of Athreos decks. Kaya's Ghost Form is an enchantment. 
that says if the creature would die or go to exile, eh, it just comes back. And it's an 8% of Kunros decks. And Soren gives your guys lifelink, can ping, and then can reanimate creatures from the graveyard. Also goes in Kunros, and Kunros says creatures can't enter from graveyards. So with Kaya's Ghost Form, the only thing you can do with Kaya's Ghost Form to make it not a blank magic card is enchant Kunros. Kunros is, has no, pays, pays you off 0%, incentivizes you 0% to do this. So I don't know why I would put a card like this in my deck that only works with my commander and doesn't work when my commander's out. The only thing I can think of a Kaya's Ghost Form is maybe 8% of Kunaros decks are super friends. Is they're putting it on planeswalkers. Uh, I don't think that's even close to true, not even remotely. So I think Kaya's Ghost Form is just a nombo. I do, you don't want this card to only be active on your commander. Why would you want that? And if your commander is not out and then you're playing Kaya's Ghost Form, well, what is going on? This is a three mana commander. You should probably be out at all times. The whole, the whole idea I can think of a Kunro stack, and from what I saw from looking at it, is that you just stacks. It's a stacks type thing. So, yeah. And he's one of them in the command zone. And then Soren, Vengeful Blood Lord, he minuses to bring creatures back. Can't do it. We can't do it. The only thing you can bring back is Kunaros. And you'd have to go to your graveyard. Anyway, are we going to put Kunaros in our graveyard in our deck that probably has Rest in Peace and maybe Graph Digger's Cage to double up on this effect? No, thank you. What is going on? I also like as an added Nambo bonus, Soren also doubles up Lifelink and Kunaros already has Lifelink. So it doesn't even give you that. So these ones, I just think, I mean, if you have a Kunaros deck, I would recommend these your first two cuts. Yeah, absolutely. Do not put these two cuts in your deck. 8% and 11% of decks. It's like one. So if 10 people. Build this deck. One of them is going to have Kaya's Ghost Form, and one of them is going to have Vengeful. Oh my goodness, no thank you. That's that's just not right. This next one's quick, and I know a lot of people know about this, but I felt it was important to get out there because some people definitely still don't know about this. It's Moon Mist in Tovalar Dire Overlord. It's in 68% of Tovalar decks, and I'm going to give that number mostly a pass and just skip to saying, make sure you know Moon Mist does not work at all with any creature that has Daybound or Nightbound. The reason, creatures with Daybound or Nightbound, specifically, this is the rule, cannot transform by any means except their Daybound or Nightbound ability. Yes. Uh, there's also the other one that stops things from transforming. That does work. Immerwolf. The Immerwolf, which that one works because it prevents transformations, but it doesn't cause transformations. Moomiz tries to make things transform when they can't transform. So that that's the difference between those two cards. Like BZ said, this is an easy one, but be careful. Yes. I know some people are going to be, just put it in for flavor reasons because it says werewolf on it. But I mean, even if you're trying to build like a powerful Tovalor deck, you could probably just take it out. It's not going to work with any of the new good stuff. Here's another quick one just to make sure uh, everybody's on the same page. Propaganda in Teferi Temporal Archmage. Now, if you're playing Propaganda in your Teferi deck to prevent yourself from being attacked, that's the idea and that would be working. But what it doesn't do is prevent your Teferi from being attacked. As Propaganda and Ghostly Prison do not prevent opponents from attacking Planeswalkers. They can swing at them willy-nilly without paying that tax. I think both cards existed before there were Planeswalkers. So there was no... Some of the new cards have Planeswalker on them because there was no card type to specify over on those old cards. Mm -hmm. So 15% of Teferi Temporal Archmage decks, decks are playing Propaganda. And I, I think I don't want to give this one a pass and say, like, you're probably making a mistake because... Tef Teferi is like a really strong card. That's You mm -hmm. have a lot of higher power decks over there. And what are you doing in a, a more higher power deck if you're trying to stop yourself from being attacked when Teferi is the main threat and they need to keep him off the board? I'm not sure. I don't think this is a good fit. All right, I like this next one. This is another like super mega non-bow. It's Soul Scar Mage in the Scorpion God. It is in 22% of Scorpion de God decks, one-fifth over. So what Soul Scar Mage does is says when opponent's creatures are dealt damage, the damage basically gets turned into minus one, minus one counters, which works super well with the Scorpion God. Except go to EDH Rec and take a look at a Scorpion God deck and find me any card that deals damage and doesn't put minus one, minus one counters on already. Because with the Scorpion God, you're now incentivized for all of your removal and all of the bells and whistles and tunes and buttons and knobs you can turn to make minus one, minus one counters, to kill your opponent's creatures so you can draw cards. Soul Scar Mage is like, no, nah, you're going to have to jump through an extra hoop and your deck has no cards that can do that. The good cards that destroy creatures um, or that do damage, they exist. There's a few of them. They're here and there. But it's, it's strange because if we don't draw our Soul Scare Mage while playing our okay removal, like there's a Braid. A Braid's a good card. Like you could definitely have it in your deck. But it's like if you don't draw your Soul Scare Mage, it's just a medium removal spell in your, in your Scorpion God deck. It just feels like, yeah, it feels like they were going for something here. And maybe... When you combine this with, like, uh, board wipe, like, 
Blasphemous hat? Specifically. Specifically, you get you do get that value, but then you kill your scorpion god also. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're just mining you're killing your whole your whole team. I guess you're drawing a bunch of cards. It's definitely not the worst thing. And there is some synergy, but I think the synergy is being overtaken and looked at like it's something that it's not. Here's here's what this is. You either build around this one drop that's one out of ninety nine cards in your deck, and then when you don't have the one drop, your cards are actively bad with your commander. Or you don't build around the one drop at all, and it does nothing in your deck. None of those, neither of those options are good when I can just exclude it and have my deck run more smoothly. Exactly. You're, you're just going to be playing removal spells that aren't going to be the removal spells you want to be playing in Scorpion God to make Skull, Soul, Soul, Soul Scar Mage better, but that makes your Scorpion God deck better, and he's the commander, so you should probably build around him. Soul Scar Mage makes him makes the deck worse and makes Soul Scar Mage better. Ah, super non -mo. What about number nine? This one's just funny to me, and I understand that this is a good magic card that probably belongs in some percentage of Scytherix decks. But I want to point out the Nambo because it is hilarious to me. Black is the second best color for board wipes. We got Toxic Deluge, Mutilate, there's tons of other things. You you can do good in mono black. So Damnation in Scytherix the Blight Dragon is a, a whiff for me. This doesn't make any sense. Why would you want to do this? He is Scytherix, he has the ability to regenerate. Damnation specifically prevents regeneration. Now I understand. Damnation's a pretty good card, and this does go in some percentage, but 34? I don't oh. think it goes in 34%. Like, one in three Scytherix decks want Damnation? That just doesn't sound true to me. I, I don't... I can give up very few percentage points, and in some instances, you can find Black Boar Wipes that won't kill Scytherix. We're trying to pump it. We're going to lash right it. We're going to make it bigger... So that things like Toxic Deluge are just going to be a one-sided wipe. Same is probably true with Mutilate. We're like, I have seven swamps, but Scytherix is a 10-10. Boop. Make all the creatures go away. Attack somebody for like three or four. Whatever's left over. That feels way more productive to me than just like, all right, damnation. Uh, get rid of my Scytherix. I'll play it later. I feel like you want to keep it out because of its resiliency. And I guess it depends on what you want your board wipe count to be. But you do have Crux of Fate, which is actually very good in this deck. And you have, um, what is it, Toxic Deluge. Those two... So those are the first two you're going with. Those are the best two. It feels like you never really have to go to Damnation. Now, could be wrong, but nonetheless, I think it's still a Nambo enough to mention. We can't be wrong when I say that Scytherix dies to Damnation. Yes, it, that is true. Every time. Okay. Uh, number 10 here. This is Ram Through, the classic Ikoria common in Nyeth of the Dire Hunt. It's in 12% of Nyeth decks, so pretty sizable chunk. And what Nyeth wants you to do is your creatures become blocked, you fight, you get to draw cards, and then she can double creature's power. Now, Ram Through just says, target creature you control, deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. And that is not a fight. It's a punch, we call it sometimes. It looks like a fight. It might read like a fight. It's got the it's in the same common slot as all the fight cards have ever been. It is not a fight. You will not draw a card. Yes, you will not draw a card off of this. Now, I understand that your commander can, like, double power, and there is some idea here that, like, oh, yeah, maybe this works. But why are we stretching this low? There's so many decent or at least passable fight spells. Plenty. And fighting is rewards our commander 10 times more. There's no reason to ever go to ram through in these decks, meaning either people think it draws or people are just blissfully unaware that this is just a very bad magic card. Right. Build around Doomblade is not something I'm interested in when I'm not touching Doomblade with a 50-foot pole. Like, you just don't need to do this. It's It looks like it's there, and it's kind of it's like hanging out in the party. It's like, hey, guys, what's going on? And it's like, you're not invited. This You do not come here. I bet you I can find 15 fight spells that go in this deck before you even think about ram through. And then it's like, okay, you have 15 one-for-one -one removal spells. How many one-for-one -one removal spells do you need? Well, at least, because, well, I mean, it's totally passable in this deck. I mean, the idea is... You yeah, know, but you, you still, that, like, you don't want too many. You yeah, have enough. You, well, yeah, you, you once you find the 15 fight spells, you don't need to go to ram through. Yeah. And you're in red. I mean, red has some decent removal spells, especially, like, board wipes. I just don't... Ram through is an effing commander. It's not playable. You shouldn't play it unless you're on an extremely strict budget that is not allowing you to like buy too many cards other than that you're never touching this card so it is definitely an oversight for it to be in this many decks yeah i mean i'm not saying it's literally unplayable because there's the niche spots that ram through does belong in and that is when your commander is gigantic with trample and you can try to kill people with like it's literally like a fling that's great we're not we cannot go say all right for this common i'm gonna put a whole different sub theme in my deck no no, this doesn't work. Uh, next is my favorite one, personally. This is a good one. It is Mizzix Mastery. In 11% of Seven 
the Chronoclasm decks. Now, Mystic's Mastery says, four mana, exile into your sorcery from your graveyard. You make you copy it, and you may cast that copy without paying its mana cost. And it has Overload, which means you can do it for all instant sorcery your graveyard for five blue, or no, five red, red, red. That doesn't have any blue in it. Now, this one makes no sense to me what's so ever. Let's just start at the beginning here. Okay, so Sivan cares about casting cards from your graveyard. Huh? Mizzix's Mastery doesn't do that. Oh. Mizzix's Mastery targets an instant sorcery, exiles it, then you cast a copy of it. From exile. From exile. I mean, you're just you're casting a copy. You're not casting the card from your graveyard. So that is not going to trigger Seven to do his copy thing. Yeah. So that doesn't work. Um, the whole deck now, you're playing Seven, mm-hmm. is filled with flashback, jumpstart. Aftermath. Aftermath. Ways to play cards from your graveyard because you want to cast the card from your graveyard every turn to trigger seven. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. That makes perfect sense. There's not going to be anything in your graveyard to Mizzix Mastery back. You don't want anything in your graveyard. You want to have cast it already. And now, I understand that you know getting the one thing with Mizzix Mastery is going to be okay sometimes, but your graveyard isn't going to fill up. Mizzix Mastery is good in decks that are going to have somewhere between 10 and 20 instant sorceries late in the game. And now casting this is a win. Right. This is just going to win you the game. It's not going to do that. You're going to overload it late in the game. There's like four. <laughs> four in your graveyard. And it's not casting them. It's not triggering seven. This has to be, this is such a huge, like, out of left field nombo for me that it's crazy that it is in any deck. I see you, Mrs. King's Mastery, and I will raise you <laughs> past in flames in the same deck. 38%. We thought this was in the pre-con or something, but it's actually not. Fast and Flames isn't even in the pre-con. And 38%, it's in those seven decks. Problem with Past and Flames is, all right, it gives your Instant Sorceries flashback, which they probably already have anyway. So then you have to play Fast and Flames. Then you get one copy of the first flashback with Savine. You're not really a Storm deck. You just get the copy. Now it's in your graveyard. But casting Past and Flames, which you want to do first before you cast anything else, gets co- it steals the Savine copy and now doesn't do anything. Because they just gain flashback again. Yeah, so one, our whole deck is going to be built around these flashback type mechanics. We're already going in on that. That's the idea of this commander. We're in on casting flashback. So, again, just like Mizzix Mastery, yeah, there might be one or two decent spells in your graveyard. Mm-hmm. Four mana to give our th- to give like one or two things flashback is not worth it. There's way better rates. There's Snapcaster. There's Mission, Mission briefing. briefing. There's and there are plenty of other ones that aren't as good. Yeah, but Jace Prince Prodigy. They're going to be better than the four mana sorcery. The flashback does nothing on this card. It st- it literally takes away from Seven's ability, making it so the next flashback is nothing. This card, both of these cards are just not what Seven wants to be doing at all. Yes, uh, unless your Savine deck is way out in left field and basically doesn't care about Savine. I feel like that's obvious, but we definitely, you know, taking the comments from the last two parts, have to take that into consideration and at least mention it. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I, if the decks, the decks, the Savine decks that want to play Mizzix Mastery and Passive Flames, those are actually uh, kit card decks. Like, hey, I just built a Storm deck and I just put Savine in the command zone. Like, okay. But I know 38% of people didn't do that. Yes. This next one's a little PSA. It's not, this card doesn't work. I'm going to say that again. It's not, this card doesn't work. It's a PSA about how it works. Yes. To be aware, it is Skull Clamp, which is one of the best cards in all of Commander, in Shire Shizo Caretaker. It's in 48% of the decks. And Skull Clamp is a one-man artifact. You equip it, plus one, minus one, to a creature. And when the creature that's equipped dies, you draw two cards. Now, yes, you have lots of small creatures to kill with the Skull Clamp. And it is going to be good. But we just want, this is a PSA. Literally just like be aware if it's in your deck. If you have Shiri out and you have Skull and you put Skull Clamp on a creature and it dies, mm-hmm. it pumps the creature's power before it dies, meaning you will not get it back with Shire. Now, is this saying you shouldn't put Skull Clamp in Shire? No, absolutely not. It's not what we're saying. In fact, I probably have it in a higher percentage of decks. Yeah. I just want to make sure people know that they're just not going to get the triggers. That's the only thing. And it's it, totally fine because I would put it in every one of my Shire decks I ever made. Yes. Just throwing it out there for anyone who may not know this. We've seen it. We've gotten it commented many, many times when we ask for suggestions and it keeps coming up. So it's happening. It's I don't don't like make fun of these people. It just, it happens. Just check yourself next time you have Skullclamp and Shire because 
You equipped a black cat, not getting a trigger. Yes. And the last one, the very last one. The biggest one, I think. Yes. This is Sundial of the Infinite in Delina Wild Mage decks. 26% of Delina Wild Mage decks are playing Sundial of the Infinite. Now, the thing that Sundial of the Infinite does is it ends your turn. This has a lot of cute interactions, whether it be from things like uh, sacrifice at the beginning of your next end stop or just permanent effects that end at the next end stop. Stuff like that can be ended. Now, this is this actually is the whole Obeka deck, if, you, if you're wondering. We'll get there. The reason that this doesn't work is because Delina is weirdly worded, incredibly weirdly worded. She attacks... She makes these token copies and gives them an ability. Yes. The ability is exileless at the beginning or exileless at the end of combat step. These tokens have this ability forever and always. Mm -hmm. Meaning if you end your turn and you go to the next player's turn, as soon as they go to their combat and the end of their combat, then then your guys are gone. They're all going to be exiled. You can get around Delina having to like get rid of them for the first turn. But the next turn, it's going to happen, and you can't stop that. Which brings us to our main point. Sundial of the Infinite is literally almost pointless with Delina Wild Mage. I, I don't know, like, are you building the tribal, like, are you trying to build Mono Red Obeka? Because it, you're not going to get, like, Sundial doesn't work with Delina. Why is your commander Delina if you're building the Mono Red and the, and the turn deck? It just doesn't work. Because... You'll stop the Delina trigger to exile at the end of combat, and then there's just three more. You're not going to be able to stop all three of those. You can't end your opponent's turns in the middle of combat. It's just not going to work at all, which gives us to the next one, Delina Wild Mage in Obeka Brute Chronologist. Now this one, 58%, because Delina is kind of a new card. So 58% of people playing Obeka who have the option to add Delina are adding it. Please don't. It does not work with Obeka at all. It's the same It's the same deal. Okay, make a token that's a copy of whoever... And now it goes away. Nope, I'll stop it and my turn. And then it just goes away. You just wasted all your effort. And there's no point to this. You're never going to get an extra combat with the tokens. Ever. This, this is a very confusing word thing because we've had many, many cards like the Lena Wild Mage yes. that make these tokens for combat and get rid of them at the end of combat, but they're triggers. And because of that, when they're triggers and they're not an ability on the token, you can end it when the trigger goes on the stack and keep them forever. Mm hmm. Delina is a very special exception, and I will just say extremely confusing. This, I'm not even blaming anyone because this one, I didn't even know how it worked at all. It seems like it would work. It but took, Yeah, it took us like 15 minutes to find this. I was like reading Star City was just had an article where it's like, yeah, use Delina and Sundial the Infants. Like, it doesn't, no one knows that it just didn't work. They're like, people are just accidentally spreading misinformation about this combo. Combo. <laughs> Yeah, this, it's a nonbo because it doesn't do anything. You just end your turn early for no reason. Yeah, please don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. But uh, that is our video. Special shout outs to all of our patrons. Love you all as much as we can without making you uncomfortable. If you like the content that we make, you can go to Patreon and support us. The link's in the description. It's for you. You can support us and have a great time. None of that rhymed. <laughs> was it supposed to? I don't know. It sounded like the way you were doing it. It was rap. It's not supposed to rap. It's like poetry. It doesn't have to rhyme. Ah, uh, yes. You shouldn't have to rhyme these words. It was an A, B, C, D, E, F rhyme scale. <laughs> I, the, the next verse had all the rhymes. Yeah. Too bad. You guys will never get there. We're not going to that verse. Uh, I want to just sing the whole thing. I thought I was passing it to you for the next part. TCGplayer.com. It's, it's a website where you can go and support the nitpicking nerds. You click on the affiliate link in the description below. Guess what? Navigate through that website, buy all the magic cards and whatever else you want from the website. And guess what? The purchase supports the nerds. We get kicked back just because you bought things you wanted for yourself. I'm thinking Dragon Shield now. I'm thinking now I need to buy sleeves to put all these awesome cards in. If only there was an EU and US link that I could click on in the description of this exact video to do just that. Well, this person I'm, I'm role playing is an idiot because of course they should know. There's links in the description. Yes. Uh, there's also a Discord. Come in, DM the nerds, say hi to the nerds, uh, talk to people about the nerds, talk about magic, and share pictures of your cute pets. I was going to say that if you didn't, actually. Uh, well, do we have a tidbit? Do we have a tidbit? The answer is, of course we don't. Of course we do. Of course we always have tidbits. I was going to say that this is, like, probably literally my favorite videos we've ever made. I don't know if that's true for me. There's a lot of other ones I had a lot of fun with. I mean, even just our one we did Monday, I enjoyed that one. That was that was a good one. We're definitely doing that again. I won. The, the disagreements. I think you overall won. It was pretty close. Fair. Uh, 
can't win a debate. I <laughs> won the debate. I don't like thinking about it. <laughs> um, for this one, I feel like these videos are the most helpful because it like if you watch our video, you can't really unhear learning that a rules interaction is different. So it just changes all the games you you play to make them like you know on rails fair and just it's literally like improving people's play. I think it's really cool. They proved our play. We like, we wouldn't have known that like Gisa didn't work the way we thought. We're just spouting nonsense. It's not true. I mean, we've said that like we said it like three times. It seems like that we kept promoting it. We're like finally, and no, we said it at least twice. I should have known. It seems like it would work. I mean, it looks so cool. Come on. I mean, it was such a cool interaction. Well, we got it. It's now joined the ranks of failures in Commander. That's yeah, in our. It's in our. It's in our. Uh, doesn't work video. Right. Peace out, Trap Scout. <laughs> Thank you.